Hi there, everybody. My name is Tor, and uh, thanks for coming. Yes, so I'm in theoretical computer science. In particular, I'm in algorithm theory and complexity, which is somewhat dry, which is why I tried to sex it up a bit. And uh, I don't have time more than eight minutes, but what can you do in eight minutes? Sex. So believe it or not, <laughs> one couple out of five today comes together and gets married because of online dating. Right? This is, I think, an amazing number. Um, so these people hook up on electronic dating sites, and here are some of them, there are a bunch of them, and actually find their soulmate and, and get married. There are many more shorter romantic incidents based on these uh, online dating things. So, so how does this work? This is obviously a major thing now for, for our life. You, uh, you join uh, something like OKCupid, and you start out filling a form, telling the system about who, who you are, Depending on uh, the exact dating site, you would answer questions like this. So you, it's a personality test that basically uh, tries to find some stereotype that you conform to based on your age and gender and interests and so on. And this is then mapped into a multi-dimensional space. I only took two dimensions here because it's easy to draw. So let's assume it's a very simple site that only checks how many books do you read, how old are you. But in, there might be many more dimensions it's hard to draw. So, so people would cluster around these axes. And you can see the three people up there would hook up together quite well, and the pe two people down there. I've thrown away gender here, because that would just make it more complicated. Normally, you would want to match people according to their sexual preferences as well. Now, and now, now we have a well-defined problem, and this is where people know I come in. So you have these points in multidimensional space, and you want to cluster them in groups. So how do you do that? And let me just show you how this is done. So you start... Uh, by putting two points somewhere in the plane, the, the uh, pink point and the blue point, and then for every of the individuals, you try to compute the distance to the nearest point. So we start with uh, this guy, he computes his distance to that, and that he's obviously closer to the pink point, so he gets a pink shirt. And you do this for everybody. He's closer to the blue point, and these people are all closer to the blue point as well. That was round one. Now comes round two. You move the points to the center of their uh, of the individuals aligned with them. Uh, so the pink, there's only one pink guy, so the pink point moves here. The blue point tries to allocate itself in the weighted center of the four people who are blue. And then you do the same thing again. So we take away the shirts. The, now there are two guys closer to the pink point and three guys closer to the blue point. You remove the points again, and you continue doing this until the system is stable, which it is now. Now nobody will change the shirt color anymore. And at this point, the system stops. And we have found our classification. And now the system would start hooking people up. Right? And this is a, a concrete algorithm. It's called Lloyd's algorithm. I showed you how it looks. If you write it down in math and a bit of code, it looks like this. A bit more scary, but not something not everybody in this room should be able to absorb. It's just high school math. right? And it looks sexy and funky, but it's really nothing behind it. Sit down for three hours. It's completely clear. It's clear enough to code it in a computer. And that's the point about these things. right? These things are mind-numbingly simple, so simple that you can write them down into a computer program and run them on millions and millions of points. That's what an algorithm is. So for those of you who've never seen an algorithm, here is one. It's not the best one, but it's nice to see the points move around, which is why I chose it. There are many algorithms for many problems. This is one algorithm for the clustering problem. Right? So why should you care? Well, one thing really just to know that this may look scary, but it has replaced this. Right? So Cupid is now, in principle, a robot. It's a piece of code somewhere that does all your romantic choices for you, or maybe not all of them, more and more. Now, why should you care? Let me tell the exact same story with a, with a different context, not romance, but videotapes. So this is done exactly the same way. So Netflix and Amazon, all those uh, services that find good movies for you, do exactly the same thing. They stereotype you, and based on this stereotypization, they will recommend movies for you. Buffy, The Door, Star Wars, Enigma, whatever. And it does this on the basis of various signals it knows about you. So it could be signals like you report it yourself. You have filled out a form just like in the dating system. Do I like Val Kilmer? And if you say yes, then the system will recommend The Doors movie to you. But there could be other signals that the, that the system has harvested somewhere else. For example, your earlier rental behavior. So if, for example, I've rented Buffy 3 in March and Buffy 4 in February and Buffy 9 in March, then the system will make the informed choice that, oh, he probably likes Buffy movies, so let's also recommend uh, Buffy season 1 to him, without me actually telling the system, yes, I like Buffy. The system inferred this based on my previous behavior. 
Or, even better, it could read my email. And it could see that in my email, I often talk about I watched Star Wars the other day, or I sold my old Obi-Wan doll, or whatever. And from that information, it might infer this person is really interested in Star Wars, so let's recommend some Star Wars movies to him. So the clustering algorithm is the same, but the way information about me is harvested is different. And now it gets slightly scary, right? Because why should they read my email? Well, they do. Right? Because Google Mail does it, and it sells the information about you to somebody else who really cares what your movies are. And let me tell the story once again, and now about news reporting. Uh, so, um, and we can start with the Facebook. Here is Alice. She finds a few pages on the internet. Some of them she likes. And uh, these stories then make up her so-called Facebook feed. So those of you who are on Facebook or similar sites will know this. So every time you like something, this makes up your feed, your news feed. Bob does the same. I'm friends with both Alice and Bob, so I get a combined news feed of stuff they like. Now, this is all uh, nice and fine, except I have too many friends, so the system, Facebook in this case, has to find a way to filter between the information from Alice and Bob, because I simply can't read everything all my friends read. Right? So it's going to find uh, some of the things... So I assume I often read the things I get from Alice, then the system will increasingly show me more and more news from Alice, because that's the news I'm clicking on every time. I don't really care about Bob's stuff. Right? So, after a while, Facebook will be so friendly and only show me news about Alice. And then I suddenly have the impression that everything in the world is pink. Right? Because the system now filters actively information to me to make me happy. And that means my world now becomes completely pink. Actually, it doesn't com become com completely pink because the system chose Alice, because chose Alice matches me. She has the same tastes and personal, political, cultural preferences as I have. One so what I actually get is not a Facebook feed that is Alice's. It's the Facebook feed that is mine. Right? Because now I'm only bombarded information that I like in the first place. And I get no news. You can even tell the story about Google. There's a famous Google search from last year where somebody Googled Egypt. And, and uh, depending on who you are, you get two completely different Google pages. On the left side, you get something about politics and the so-called Arab Spring. On the right side, you get cheap flights. This only depends on what kind of person you are. And now all these nice personalization algorithms, which I'm trying to tell you about, may become, if you want, a problem. Because your world will increasingly become you magazine because all these algorithms filter information to make you happy and just confirm your worldview. So from this idea that the world is an open agora, a forum where we all meet and hear about exegesis and physics and so on, the world suddenly becomes just a bunch of bubbles. And each of us lives in one of them, except, of course, if we're lucky, and some dating algorithm found somebody who is sufficiently close to us to share our world. That's it.